So it's the 1st of March, and uh, I don't know if you've all felt a change in the energy. I certainly did in the last couple of days. Um, when I was thinking about which uh, deity or archangel to call in, the archangel Zadkael came in, and it, I don't, you probably know this, but Archangel Zadkael is the angel of forgiveness as well as the um, Archangel of hope. So my question is, sorry, not hope, um, definitely forgiveness, but there's another energy. Uh, Anna Lee, do you know? Okay, I'll I come back. I know the archangels, I know the goddess and goddesses. Do you know Anna? Not off, the top of my, not off the top of my head for that. Is that so kill? I have here, he, he helps with healing difficult memories and mental challenges and helps with clearing karma debts. He's the association angel of memories at Kiel. Yes. Mercy, compassion and tolerance, and forgiveness. Well, that's why I needed him. I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So just as well, yes. So my question is, who do we need to forgive? Oh. I, I'm going to start. Um, I need to give my family for being dysfunctional and hurting me. Uh, how about you, Paul? Myself. Myself. For all of the ways in which I still, to this day, sabotage myself through fear. Um, I have one specific one at the moment that I'm working with but yeah myself makes sense yeah Anna Have I yeah um <clears throat> I was gonna say parts of myself um but there are others as well I don't you know feel like naming names but no. you know there have been quite a few um, people, but I think the, that it is most important to forgive myself and these parts of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Bonnie. Um, I think it would be self and the regrets that I have from earlier ages where I did things that I really shouldn't have. And from those things, I blamed my family and they are responsible for some of it, but but not all of it. And so um, I think it starts here. Right. Yeah. Carl? Um, like a lot, you know, I need to forgive myself for, particularly like as Paul mentioned, sometimes succumbing to the fear of change and of embracing some of the things that need to happen, but also to forgive um, some of the people who hurt me, um in the past um and for me not you know understanding that they were probably acting from a place of of fear of themselves so you know yeah <clears throat> we all need to forgive each other <laughs> for lots of things it's a big statement but you're so right i mean just for ourselves you know um thanks carl uh, Anna Stone. Definitely myself as well for allowing myself to be in toxic cycles that I know are bad for me and allowing people to get the better of me. <laughs> I cannot, you know, I and falling victim to my own, like, you know, inability to sometimes see things for what they are, I guess I would say. And then I, of course, like my mom, but that's going to be a while still. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I feel you I'm right there with you on that. Um, thank you. Uh, Vince? It's very interesting that we're coming into this. So, uh, you know, what I'll share later, but from the truth of who we are, there's nothing to forgive at all. And uh, from the standpoint of the body mind and identifying with our body mind, well, the body mind has all kinds of conflicts. So I would say that in the last 10 months, I've been working out through the body mind forgiveness towards my dad. I'm here taking care of him. And it uh, brought up a lot of things from childhood that were not even uh, visible. So there's a releasing, a forgiving of the 
uh, resistance, the make wrong, the lack of understanding, and the making myself an effect of him as a cause. So there's a forgiving of my own perception, which was delusional because I realized the truth of who I am. So wow. Thank you. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you. Hello, Morak. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you. Who do you need to forgive is the question. Generally, or this week, or recently, or in this moment, <laughs> in this moment, <laughs> in this moment. It's, it's forgiving myself this week for um, kind of like pushing myself too hard to get things I want, I'm passionate about done, rather than just letting them unfold. So I kind of been, I'm, I'm very hard taskmaster on myself when I do get focused, and. Um, so forgiving myself for that and just letting things gently unfold as they should rather than um, get irritated with myself. That makes sense. I understand. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, David has just joined us. Hello, David. I don't know if you'd like to answer this question. Um, where, where just I asked the question, who do you need to forgive? Uh, would you like to share an answer to that? Don't feel obligated, it's up to you. Uh, if you're there and you'd like to say hi and unmute and turn your camera on, please do so, There's, you don't have to. Or maybe type in the chat if you want to at any point. Um, no obligation, up to you. If you feel that you want to uh, uh, yes, you've you've written in the chat. Uh, okay, cool. You you just wanted to jump in. Well, if you want to share who um, who it was that you need to forgive, just either bring it to your mind and just work through it in your own time, or if you want to share with us on the chat, then that's cool as well. I just wanted to say before I pass over to Paul that um, this Sunday I'm doing a concert as part of the gospel choir that I sing with, and the the theme is forgiveness. And when we were talking about it in rehearsal last Sunday, as we were talking about what forgiveness meant, I started to actually feel the power of forgiveness. So just by bringing our attention onto it, you know, we're, we're creating that, um, that energy within our field just by focusing on it, which is an amazing thing, right? But there's that old uh, chestnut of drinking poison and 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 thing and w wishing for the other person to die. That's that's like what we carry on, carry with us if we don't forgive. I think it's true, but it, it takes a lot. Anyway, thank you for sharing, it, everyone. Um, Paul, I'm going to hand over to you now for the um, segment. Thanks. Thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for a brilliant start. Um, so I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna make a slight alteration and not do an inner child healing meditation with you. But what I want to do is share with you a condensed version of a of a druid peace meditation that I'm doing for 21 days currently. Um, and talking about forgiveness, I'm not entirely in agreement that we need to forgive everyone, but I certainly think that peacefulness or developing peace between ourselves and others and generating peace for others is really important. So I want to share this meditation with you. Um, and it's it's going to go in this format. So I'm going to, I'm going to recite a line. I'm going to tell you to say it silently within yourself. I'm going to give you a visualization to go of each one of those. It's going to be very quick, um, about five minutes. Um, and then we're going to finish, all right? So if you want to get yourself comfortable, And begin by breathing. Breathe into the deep center of your being. Just very gently. Letting go of all of the cares of the mundane world. Just focusing on breathing into the still center of your being. And however you're sat, Become aware 
of the embrace of Mother Air as she envelops you in her love completely. Repeat after me silently within yourself. Deep within the still center of my being, may I contemplate please. Visualize deep within yourself a well of water. This water can hold the intention of anything placed within it, that it nourishes the land around you, connected by the roots that connect you to the earth. From your heart, generate feelings of peace and imbue the water that nourishes the land. Silently, within the quiet of the grove, may I cultivate peace. See yourself within the land, within the sacred grove, surrounded by trees, and your roots reach out across the land, connecting to the root work system that connects all of our ecosphere. Gently. In the greater circles of all life, may I radiate peace. And as you sit in that grove, see the light of the sun warm you. Its rays cause buds of flowers to spring up all over your body, opening, blossoming into beautiful flowers as the wind carries the pollen of peace and germinates the whole land and the whole world around you with the peace that you have generated from inside. And finally, say silently to yourself, ah when, ah when, ah when, the words of inspiration. Thank you. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. That was beautiful, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's just all take a deep breath. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for that beautiful start and uh, welcome Greta that's joined us. Hello, good to see you. Um, Anna, I'm gonna now hand over to you. Hey everyone and hey to new people. So um, I, today is March 1st and I think, or maybe many of you know that this month is full of a lot of very interesting energies. And um, I wanted to set the tone for the month for us um, and get us into alignment and maybe clear some, anything that we're holding on to that maybe we don't need right now. So I'm gonna do a little, I don't know, we'll see what happens little meditation clearing thingy. Okay, so get comfortable and gently close your eyes and bring your awareness into your heart center. Perhaps visualizing that you're breathing through your heart in and out, in and out. And in your heart, there is a flame, a divine spark. Notice it, feel it. And this divine spark begins to grow within your heart, bigger and bigger, spreading out through your chest 
It's burning and clearing away all resentment, anger, guilt, fear, judgment, all negativity, anything you're holding on to in your heart. Allow this divine spark, which is your divine spark, your true divine self to burn away everything that no longer serves you that you're ready to let go of as we're moving forward into spring. And it continues to grow in your heart, spreading throughout your entire chest. burning and clearing away any congestion or illness, viruses, bacteria, fungi. And then it begins to extend upwards into your head, burning and clearing away confusion, overwhelm. being in your head too much, overthinking, the monkey mind. Allow your, your head to be purified, clearing out your third eye, your crown, so that you can better see and better receive information from spirit and allow it to spread down your back through your spinal column, clearing out all blockages that are preventing the energy from running smoothly in your body. Moving down to your pelvis, clearing out the pelvic area, your sexual organs, stuff in your first chakra. Then moving up into your digestive organs, past your second chakra and third chakra into the solar plexus. Clearing out whatever you're clinging to that is preventing you from moving forward in the way that will best serve you and your soul. And then moving back up to your heart and allow this flame to then extend down through your your limbs, through your arms and your legs, flushing out anything you've taken on, any energies from other people, or just from being in the world, all being flushed out. Anything you've taken on that is not yours, allow the power of your soul and your divine spark to expel anything out of your energy grid that is not authentically yours. Feeling your aura expanded, your divine self radiating outward, knowing that you have this ability within yourself to expel anything out of your energy grid that is not yours and that you no longer want to hold on to. And coming back into the heart. Grounding back into your seat. Feeling your root, 
your connection to Mother Earth. Put your hands over your heart. Give thanks to yourself. To your own divine spark and to the divine within you and within all beings and within everything. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. It's beautiful. It was. It was spontaneous. <laughs> it was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so um, welcome DJ that joined us. Uh, We've talked about uh, forgiveness uh, before you joined, and we are, I asked the question, who do you need to forgive? And maybe you could just think about that, uh, because you weren't here for that, uh, and just call that person to mind and think about why you need to forgive them. You know, it could be yourself. Um, Anna, thank you for that beautiful meditation. Um, you reminded me and all of us of our, of our power and of our ability to expand our auric field right and um, that's just a couple of things that i wanted to talk about before i hand over to vince for his segment um if anybody is not muted i'm gonna ask you to mute um unless you're speaking so just just a couple of things before i hand over to vince um <clears throat> chakras and clearing the chakras it's something that we can often forget about and um, doing a guided meditation i find is very useful in chakra clearing um, or even just a very quick uh, visualization of just imagining the seven main chakras and if you if you don't know where they are which you probably do um, you, can, you can look them up online um, and, and just see them and feel them opening and clearing out. Um, you can visualize colors, but the simplest way to do it is to simply visualize the violet flame um, and requesting the violet flame from the Mother Earth coming up through your body and aura and just being seated or standing in that, in that energy. So clearing chakras, every sort of... Um, day at least and also as we evolve on an individual level i wanted to talk about how the more awake we become um there there is a responsibility because as we're as we're awakened um our karmic pattern if you like becomes heightened and quickened and we can attract a lot of negative stuff, which is why it's, it's really important to stay high vibrational. And when you find that this negative stuff happening, do psychic protection in terms of getting into a high vibration as quickly as you can, whether that's in the spiritual way or, you know, whichever way serves you, you know yourself better than anyone else. But, um, one of the ways that we can attract better experiences is by giving up complaining. And it's a hard thing to do because I notice myself doing it. But if you could, if you can make a commitment to giving up all, all kinds of complaining, your life really does get better because you start to attract better experiences. There's a lot of, a lot of negative stuff going on in the world right now. And, um, you know, it's kind of designed to bring us down. So we kind of have a personal responsibility to keep our vibe as high as possible so that we can be that energy for ourselves and for all the people that we love, right? And it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, I just wanted to also mention the importance of stillness and even just if it's a very, very short time, you can really gather a lot of energy in that short moment of stillness. So I'm really grateful to have this group 
and all of you to to bring me back into that energy because that really helps me so thank you all um and sort of taking responsibility for everything as well that happens in our lives is a really empowering state to be you know we can we can always say oh they did this to us and yeah they did but also what is our point of attraction why are we attracting certain things you know when we have when we're having negative experiences there's something in our vibration that needs to shift and the quicker that we can learn that the better for, for, for ourselves and the last thing that I wanted to say was about synchronicity and signs and how when you notice synchronicities in your life be they re repeated number sequences or you know hearing something that reminds you of something else or having a psychic experience where you know who's going to be on the telephone or you think of someone and they appear those those kind of things i call them synchronicities um and i think that they're little signs of being on the right path so i just wanted to remind us all to be encouraged by those things that when we see those signs or synchronicities that the universe is always talking to us because it's, I, I believe it's conscious and it's it's almost like a mirror or an echo of our own vibration and I, I truly believe that what we give out we get back and just to be conscious of that so that's all I wanted to say really so we're at 7 30 and with that I'm gonna hand over to Vince thank you for being here what <clears throat> what a real blessing uh, all of you I feel like I, I'm glad I came in early there was a a washing of my soul uh, relaxing and releasing through two beautiful meditations and uh, was it Paul and Anna um, so grateful for the experience and the opportunity to be here. I think it's important to understand a little bit about my background and why I do what I do. So I'll start with that. In 1999, I nearly died from a drug overdose. I was living a life of crime, drug dealing, violence. My highest aspiration was to be a mafia kingpin, much like John Gotti. That was my dream. That was my hope. And I was living that life. Um, I was surrounded by all kinds of evil and corruption. I was creating it. I was perpetuating it, propagating it. And it caught up with me because I started using drugs very heavily because I had a lot of drugs on me all the time. And I partied really severely. I did everything in my life with intensity, whether it was martial arts or sports or school, it didn't matter. I was passionate about everything I got into. When I had started using drugs, it was four days straight using cocaine, ecstasy, LSD, ketamine, pills, alcohol, you name it. And there was no sleep. It was just go, go, go until the drugs stopped working. That caught up with me. And when I was laying in the hospital bed, handcuffed to the bed as a part of a violation of my probation, wasn't supposed to be using drugs. I'd already been arrested in 98 for two um, drug charges. I determined that I needed to change my life or I wasn't gonna survive. And it horrified me that I was driving my car one moment and then wake, waking up on a sidewalk puking blood the next moment in front of a bunch of paramedics and nothing happened in between. And that nothing happening in between scared the living crap out of me because I thought, man, if I was dead, I wouldn't have woken up and I wouldn't even have known it. So I began to be very interested in whether or not there was life after death. If God was real, is there any meaning and purpose to life? This kind of thing became extremely important. That same intensity I put in everything else I put into these questions and I cut off my old life completely and everyone that I was connected with, friends, associates, doesn't matter. I just left the world, started meditating, started going to the library, searching for answers. I found Zen Buddhist meditation as a basic practice that really resonated with me, just sitting quietly doing nothing. And that was the foundation of what was about to be what I now call the core encounter. It was an access to the inner workings of this body mind. And that's when trauma began to show up. The memories of my stepfather abusing my mother severely, smashing her nose on her face as a child when I was 10 years old. And the helplessness that I felt, the, the anger, the rage, the unexpressed emotions. There was so much there that I just swallowed in and kept tight because there was nobody really to outlet that to. And, um, and it tore me down. School was very difficult for me. The reason I got involved with gangs, I was looking for survival, I was looking to be 
stronger because I felt so weak and so helpless. Um, the gang life appealed to me because I got to be tough. I got to conquer the weakness that I felt within, so to speak. But it was just a compensation that led to a tragedy almost in many ways, not just for me, but for many other people that I hurt and harmed in my life. After meditating for within about a year or so, I remember one day that I was like, man, I really want to know if God is real. I just got to know, like, is there a real God? I don't care what anybody says. I wasn't into Christianity at the time or about the Bible at all. I was kind of anti-Christian, anti-Bible. I was studying all other religions, though. I just was kind of anti-Christian for whatever reasons. I just felt there was some hokiness there. I had heard some things. And I was into Hinduism, Buddhism, studied Scientology. I mean, you name it. Satan Bible. I read the Satanic Bible because I was curious what they were talking about. Uh, but in this day, something happened where I felt this tapping on my shoulder. Like it was like this like giddiness of a child welling up within me. And it was like, I just knew I was about to encounter God. And I got to the bottom of my stairs and I literally just fell to my knees as I was filled with light. My, my awareness just shifted from the outside to the inner world completely. I was just knew I was staring right down the very central axis of my own existence. And it was just brilliant light. I just fell to my knees and I automatically exclaimed the word Jesus Christ. There was no man. I just knew in my heart of hearts that Jesus is literally the apex of the universe, not as an individual, but as an, a corporate entity of all humanity. Now, you have to understand, I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know Christianity. I didn't even know what church was about at this time. It was just Jesus and this all pervasive love, eternal life, this immortal sense of being. It was just and, and the love your enemies things. I heard all that stuff. That made sense. Forgiveness. And everything. It made sense because there was just a oneness and a totality of, of everything in the universe. It was, it was seen through the lens of eternity that all creation exists inside of the field of one singular or individual beingness that is this becomes a corporate being, right, of all people. And so I had this encounter and it blew my mind. I mean, it changed my life forever. I had experienced this toroidal field of consciousness and flow. And it was like, I was out of my mind. I was out of me, right? Vince wasn't a part of the equation in this moment. There was just God consciousness and, and love, like invincible love, indestructible love. It was this all pervasive love. Everything was secure. All was well, all was good. No matter how evil or dark or rotten things in the world could be, it all was reconciled and made sense inside of this space that I was experiencing myself as not just in, but I was experiencing myself as the space of eternity itself. And so this was radical for me. And then my father and his wife invited me to a church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, named Cal uh, called Calvary Chapel. And there's a movie out right now about the beginnings of this church called Jesus Revolution. And it's an excellent movie. I cried like half the movie. It's so powerful. But it's how this church got started. Anyway, I went there. They're kind of fundamentalist. And I didn't last very long there because... My experience didn't mesh with their teaching. And that's when I began to learn that the church had different flavors and different points of view and perspectives and such. But I got interested in the Bible and I started studying the Bible passionately and vehemently. And I prayed and I asked for guidance on my own to know the real God, the real Jesus. And I got led to a pastor who really taught me how to get into the scripture, to get into the Hebrew, to get into the Greek, to get into the deeper teachings of the word that's there. I've been studying all kinds of other religions. I still do to this day, but I just knew I needed to know the Bible because man, if I had this encounter with Jesus and I'm trying to share this with Christians and they're going to have, they, I got a lot of stuff thrown at me and I didn't understand where it was coming from, right? Because they're using this book called the Bible. Anyway, the title of what I'm sharing today is called the core encounter, discovering the truth of who you really are. The work that I do today is all driven by that experience, those contrasting experiences of being a drug dealer and a criminal, walking in darkness, using people for my own selfish gain, um, and then encountering this invincible love that is the reality of what I am and what I realized everyone is, including my stepfather who beat my mother so severely. In that moment, there was just a recognition that his true nature is God. And that's what Jesus as a symbol represented was this completed reality that whatever happens in time has been handled. So these concepts of your sins are forgiven, you know, God paid the price for all of our sins. It was like, oh, well, it all made sense to me when I started to read that because that's what I saw. But I see that in the Christian culture, there's this belief that some are in and some are out. Now, that's something that wasn't revealed to me. And so this radical idea that, man, everybody's in regardless 
was something that didn't run over very well, but it's actually a scriptural biblical idea and perspective. It's just that most Christians cannot recognize that. Well, that rub with the church challenged me to look for other ways to reach people because I knew I can't just share. When I started sharing with, about Jesus, people were like, oh, I know who you are. You're Bible thumping Christian. It's like, no, 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 no. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm telling you, like, the Jesus that I know means something much more magnificent than what you're talking about. Like, and it was like these arguments and conflicts of trying to rationalize with people and trying to explain my experience. And I said, you know what? I need to find a way to bring people to the reality for themselves, apart from religion, apart from any kind of scripture, apart from anything whatsoever. And so that journey has unfolded. I developed a program called the Core Encounter, a space where people could gather, where we could open up a space that was safe, sacred, and fully surrendered to whatever needed to be accomplished in that space, no matter how deep and dark and dirty it might be, it was gonna be safe for all of that to come forth and be realized to be what it really is, nothing at all. So when we were talking about forgiveness, I'm like, well, from one perspective, the truth of who we are doesn't have anything to forgive. There's no one to forgive and there's no one that's been wounded. Now, now this is a radical idea, but you have to understand this comes from a revelation I had over 23 years ago. This is not something somebody taught me. There's nothing to forgive. There's no one to be wounded. The essence of who and what we truly are is invincible, indestructible. Now, there's this thing that we call the body and the mind or the body mind <clears throat> with its emotions, its memories, its perspectives that most of us think we are. If you think about everything that's causing you suffering in your life, if you think about every time you're triggered, you're reactive, you're hurt, you're wounded, there's this thing called me at the center of every bit of it. There's something in the Bible I love where Jesus said, you must lose your life in this world in order to gain it. Whoever seeks to gain or preserve his or her life is going to lose it. And I really understand what that means. And it, what it means is the more you identify as an individual, as a me, with my thoughts, my memories, my emotions, my whatever, the less you realize the truth of who you are as an immortal, invincible source of all existence. And that's something that I just got as a miraculous revelation. I did not deserve that whatsoever coming out of the life that I was coming out of. But I was intensely seeking some answers. And I wanted to know the absolute truth. That was another burning question. What is absolute truth? People are like, oh, there's no absolutes. You're right. There are none in the physical universe. But what was there before there was binary duality, before there was good and bad, right and wrong, light and dark and all of that? What exists prior to that? What is the source and origin of all of these things? Well, that's something I'm passionate about giving people an experience of, a direct encounter with. And it's possible. What I do is I lead people to start to let go of the identification they hold with their body mind perspective. This is not bypassing. It's not about dismissing and invalidating what we went through. We actually handle that very well, better than therapy. When I say we, I mean me and my coaches in the work that I do. We handle it faster, we handle it more efficiently, we handle it more gently. And there's not all that re traumatization, there's not a lot of storytelling. You don't need a bunch of Rube Goldberg machines to get well. Um, and people like their Rube Goldberg machines because they like to feel like they're doing something, they're accomplishing something. But there's something special about the, the, the message of the Bible. In the Bible, the, it says the, the good news, the gospel, is this idea that what we could not do for ourselves, God has already accomplished. And see, this is a, re a living reality for me. See, the more you try to do something to make yourself better, the more you try to fix, change, control, modify, self-develop, the more you're reaffirming that something about you isn't right. What if, just what if you drop the notion that there's anything wrong whatsoever and that you're not what you thought you were? What if you just disidentify entirely from the notion that you are a human being, wounded, victimized, suffering in this world, and recognize the God embodied that you truly are? What if you got a radical perspective and a realization that you were utterly invincible, indestructible, immortal, and absolutely pure love at your core? What if that was what you could experience right here, right now? So I teach people how to let go and release the addiction. And it is an addiction. I know drugs, I know addiction. 
and I've worked in recovery centers for many, many years. And I'll tell you what, this, the worst addiction that exists on this planet is the addiction to your body mind. It's the addiction to your mental chemistry. It's the addiction to your biochemistry. It's the addiction to the self-identity that you think you are, whether it's wounded or whether you think it's excellent. Either way, it counts for nothing from the eternal point of view. Now that can hurt people's egos, but I'm not interested in placating anybody's ego. It's not what I'm about. I'm interested in people who are hungry for the truth of who they are, who are ready to just break loose and break free entirely, absolutely, positively for all time. And it can happen just like that in a moment. Now this message is a really good message for people who are tired of trying. You're tired of working out things. You're tired of going to this healer and that healer and doing this thing and that thing. And you actually just want to realize the power that you already are, that you already were before the foundation of the world. You existed as holiness and purity. The body mind appears inside of something that we call awareness, which is your essential self. And awareness is not having a bad day. Awareness doesn't care what happens inside of awareness. It's like a camera. Somebody gets shot and killed in front of it. The camera records it. If a romantic love scene takes place, the camera records it. The camera has no opinion about any of it. Now that might sound cold or inhuman, but I'll tell you something. When you have this clear perception, when you realize like all is well and good, that there's nothing really in this universe that can damage or destroy itself because everything is itself. When you realize this wonderful reality, you literally walk around invincible. Not invincible, like arrogant, like, oh, I'm, I'm this tough, Ugh. you know, it's invincible in the fact that you can walk up to people in the mall and be like, dude, do you know how loved you are? Let me talk to you about all this love that maybe you've been missing. You're bold, your love expressed, your love in action. You're not just trying to self-preserve and like, oh, let me get through the day. Let me just raise my vibration and put the shields around me as we were talking about earlier so I can make it through the day. That's a miserable existence in my opinion. I would never want to live like that ever again, because I remember what it's like to try and preserve myself and try to protect myself and believe myself as a victim of external circumstances. That's a lie. And there's a lot of spiritual teaching in this universe that we live in, this world of spirituality that perpetuates the identification with a wounded victim, vulnerable to the things of the world. But here's the facts that I know and then we'll create a little process to go there. The reality is that you at your internal, most central axis of being are 100% cause. The idea that your effect of the world around you is the deception. Now the body mind believes itself to be the effect. It has been deceived and it takes all the attention. It takes all the glory, right? The body mind says, yeah, but you don't understand. Right? I've been beaten. I've been raped. I've been molested. I've been assaulted. I've been robbed. I've lost people that I love. And it was unfair. And like the body mind will complain about all of its victimized points of view. And it's very loud and it's very obnoxious. And it demands lots of attention. And we become a slave to the body mind, a slave to sin. The Bible calls it the word sin is a word that means self negation. It means you don't know who you are. It has nothing to do with your behavior. Your behavior is an outflow of your identity. If you're just struggling to get by in life day by day, not knowing who you are, it's not fun. If you're working really hard every day to try and build up some energy to be something great, to magnify something better in the world, it's, it's hard to do that. But what if you could just release the thing itself that believes itself to be a victim, that believes itself to be an effect? And what if you could just open up to the reality that there's an endless, invincible, all-loving cause that is the real and true you? So for those of you who want to participate with me, I'm going to just lead you through a simple process. We're going to do a little breathing. It works best if you're sitting upright and I see DJ, you're kind of like chillaxing, but there's a breathing part that would be kind of difficult to do if you're sitting uh, that way. If you don't mind sitting up, brother, I'd love to have you have this experience. So don't believe anything that I'm saying, by the way, because that's not going to add any value to your life. I would love for you to experience it and to seek out 
the reality or the truth of that for yourself. And I'm going to create a little process right now where you can start to explore what I'm saying for yourself. You can experiment with me. And we're going to do a little breathing process. It's very simple. It's going to be through the nose in. And you're going to breathe as deep and as full as you can. You're going to let your belly and your chest expand. And then we're going to exhale through the mouth. All that air out. And then we're going to breathe in through the nose again. And then out through the mouth the same way. Okay. I'm just kind of instructing you. And then when the third breath, we're going to take a big full breath in and we're going to hold that breath in. Okay. And we're going to relax the body, swallow our saliva. There's a couple of reasons we're doing this scientifically speaking, holding the breath, swallowing the saliva makes us pay attention to the autonomic processes that are going on in the body. Holding the breath produces nitric oxide in the blood after we supersaturated the blood with oxygen. Nitric oxide is called vasodilator in medical terminology. It means that it opens up the blood vessels and capillaries and it allows the blood to flow more efficiently. You're gonna get like a little bit of a rush when you do this and your mind is gonna go still and quiet like that and your emotions are gonna just chill out. Your body's gonna, and you might, if you're lucky, you might even just feel that popping out of your body and realize, wow, I'm not a body. And if not, don't worry, it doesn't mean anything is wrong. But my, my intention here is to show you that you're not a body mind, okay? So we're gonna open up with that breath and then we're gonna close probably with that breath as well. So go ahead and just relax, sitting nice and straight. And let's exhale all the air out through the nose. Take a deep breath in through the nose, full breath in all the way in. Through the mouth, let it out. Through the nose in. Through the mouth out. Take deep breaths in. Through the nose in. Through the mouth out. Through the nose in and hold this breath at the top. Just hold that breath in, relax the body though. Hold the breath gently with minimal effort. Swallow the saliva, pay attention to the saliva as it runs down to the belly. Keep holding if you can, you won't die. Make your lips no pinhole. And when you're ready, slowly release the air, very slow. And just settle back, just relax and be what you truly are, pure awareness, pure being, beyond the limits of the body, the emotions and the mind. And just welcome into awareness, the awareness that you really are, whatever may be happening in the mind, emotions or body, just witness. There's nothing to do, there's no one to be right now. You already are the truth embodied. You already are pure awareness. And the awareness that you are is undisturbed by thought. It's undisturbed by emotion. It's undisturbed by the impulses or the urges in the body. Awareness is undisturbed by the activities in the world around you, people, places, and things. Just be for a few moments, the awareness that you are. Notice the quality of your experience, just being. Letting go of that engagement with the mind, emotions, and the body, and just let the mind, emotions, and body play out whatever it's playing out, giving up the need or the urge to fix, change, or control, anything at all, anything whatsoever. The you that you really are doesn't need fixing, and it doesn't need any protection. The invincible essence of being that is you already here and now always was before your body-mind came into existence. Before the body-mind stole the show, and started to demand all the attention and pretend that it was the self. You can love and show compassion and grant acceptance to the contents of the body-mind. By all means, do that. 
welcome and honor the pain, the discomfort, whatever inner conflicts may be there, but welcome them into this awareness. The awareness that is already whole, already complete, already pure. There's nowhere to get to. There's no place that you need to go. There's nothing that you need to do to be the perfection that this moment already is. The I am that I am, that you are, that we are, that we all are in this moment is totally whole. And just for now, can you entertain the possibility that there really is nothing wrong? That whatever you thought you were that might have been wounded or broken or needing fixing might not actually be the truth. Just for a moment, could you consider the possibility that you are already well and good? The very core of you, pure, pure beyond form, beyond thinking, beyond feeling, beyond the world. Are you your thoughts? Or are you that which is aware of the thought? Are you the emotions? Or are you that which is aware of the emotion? Are you what's happening in the world around you? Or are you that which is simply aware? Just look and just see. All right, let's just bring the awareness to the center of the heart. Letting that space within the chest become a little bit more open, a little more expansion there, a little more relaxed. Notice that as you let go, you just be. There's a realization that starts to take place. That you're okay. You're already okay. Good. Now let's take a moment to just welcome the presence of love into the body mind, just allowing love to fill the heart center allowing love to flow through the heart to all the different parts of the body. Let all that love flowing from the heart move upwards to the upper chest, up through the neck and throat. Let that love move up into the brain, just saturating the brain with all this love. And then let that love fountain out through the crown of your head to the sky above. Just release it. Let it flow upward and outward as if you were like a giant water fountain. Imagine, sense, or feel this living presence overflowing upward from the heart through the brain and out up into the sky and down all around you. Just let that be. God, I'm going to close with another beautiful breath series through the nose take a big breath in letting the belly expand through the mouth out big breath through the nose belly expand mouth out really give it all you got through the nose in mouth out take this breath in and hold at the top Let's hold that breath in. Soak in that oxygen. Feel the fullness in your chest. Relax the body, the shoulders, the neck. Release any tension. Be soft, be gentle, but hold. Swallow the saliva. Feel it run down right into the belly like a seed of life planted into the abdomen. And make your lips into a tiny pinhole. Slowly release that air. And just let go. And be that which you truly are.
Wonderful. Thank you all. About time up here. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to receive from all of you initially, honestly, and then share with all of you and, and be with all of you in this space. I feel my heart expanded and the love within all of you is so beautiful. I'm, I'm super grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis, as well, for having me. Thank you for your eloquence, for your love, and for your peaceful power. Much appreciated. That was beautiful. Um, you reminded me very much of um, <clears throat> the, the teacher, Florence Scovel Shin, who is one of my favorite teachers, who mm. took a lot of Bible uh, stuff um, and filtered it through a new lens. And there's a, there's a, um, there's a quote from, from her which talks about, um, in divine mind, there is only completion. And living from that place is a beautiful thing. Thank you for reminding us of that. Mm. Beautifully said. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to hand over to Greta. And um, then, yeah, go ahead. Me? Did you forget me? No, I was going to say, um, and we'll close with you, um, Bonnie. But if you would like to do it the other way around, I think maybe that would be, it depends on. It's just soother when Greta or Anna leaves. Are you okay with that, Greta? For you to close? I would actually like to go first, if that's okay. Is that okay with you, Bonnie? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the way I envisaged it for you to uh, go next. Because uh, when I, said that order Greta hadn't joined us yet. So I knew that Greta was going to, okay, you go next then, if that's okay with you. And Syra is about to join us as well. Um, she's just messaged me asking if it's okay. Thank you again, Vince. That was beautiful. So uh, Bonnie, over to you. Uh, sorry, my mistake, Greta, it's you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Alexis. Thank you, Vince. And thank you, Anna, which is when I joined, when Anna started. I've uh, really enjoyed your contribution so far. So thank you. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Greta or Coach Greta. And um, my intention is to help people change their point of attraction to match what it is that they want to manifest and i do that through helping people get clarity on what they want and then helping them get into vibrational alignment with that and as far as i know um, that means getting your thoughts and your subconscious beliefs and your emotions into vibration with what you want. Because I believe that your point of attraction equals what you feel about what you think. So it's not just what you think. It's not thinking, um, I want to meet that person or I want to have all this money. If you're thinking that and feeling lack of it, then you're going to manifest more reasons to feel the lack. So what we usually do in my segment here in Sacred Segments is a bit of group energy healing where I use the emotion code to help find and release trapped negative emotions that um, help keep your point of attraction in the more negative um, space. So that's what I think uh, I'll do today as well. If you want to know more about the emotion code, you can read the book, The Emotion Code, or you can go to my website, coachgreta.com, um, or you can simply Google. <laughs> uh, but first, I'm going to ask if everybody's okay with being included in the group energy healing. And if you're not, you can raise a hand or let me know in the chat, and then I'll make sure that you're not. And the same goes for anyone watching the recording. If you don't want to be included, you won't. But if you do, you're in. 
All right. And I'm thinking today's subject is going to be to release anything that's causing any sort of physical discomfort or pain. So for, for me, it's like right here in my left shoulder, a couple of days ago, I got woke up with this pain, which is much better after going to the spa and getting that massage by some water. <laughs> that's great. Um, but there's still a little bit, so that's what I intend on releasing today. And then you might have some kind of discomfort in your body, uh, or if there's anything else, then just set that as your intention to raise your vibration regarding that. All right, so um, what is the first emotion we can release to help with whatever intention you all set for what you would like to improve? And the first emotion to come up is rejection. So what happens when the emotion is mentioned is usually the energy comes to the surface and it might bring with it some thought, memory, person, something. And the first thing is what it's related to. And if nothing comes up, it's okay. It just means you don't need to know what it is. So can we release this emotion? Yes. Yeah. So we're releasing the trapped emotion of rejection by swiping three times. So from between your eyebrows to the back of your head, you can swipe three times with me, or you can let me swipe on everyone's behalf. You can take a deep breath, whatever feels best for you is okay. Is it released? Yes. Is there more? Yes. Sadness. So I'm just going to give you time to acknowledge what sadness brings up for you. And let's release. So release from everyone, yes. What else? Next emotion is terror. Terrified terror. Now let's release. released yes the next emotion to come up is jealousy knowledge what comes up and release three swipes to release the strapped emotion of jealousy is it released from everyone yes Discouragement. Let's release this trapped emotion of discouragement. Is it released? Yes. Next emotion to come up is abandonment. Just acknowledge what it means. And release. Good. Is it released? Yes. The next emotion to come up is sorrow. And let's release the strapped emotion of sorrow. It released, yes. Welcome, Syrah. Happy to have you here. We're doing some group energy healing to help release any physical pain or any discomfort in your body. So we've also re already released uh, a few, and we set the intention that if you want to be included, you were. So we might already have done some work for you as well.
And the next emotion to come up is jealousy. Let's release this trapped emotion of jealousy. It's released, yes. And the next emotion is indecisiveness. Let's release this trapped emotion of indecisiveness. Good. Released, yes. Another discouragement comes up. Just acknowledge. And release. Three swipes. So released, yes. Overwhelm. Good old overwhelm. Let's release this trapped emotion of overwhelm. Was it released? Next emotion to come up is lust. Let's release this trapped emotion of lust. Is it released? Yes. Mm, hatred. Let's release this trapped emotion of hatred. Good. Helplessness. Let's release this trapped emotion of helplessness. Good. Confusion. Let's release this trapped emotion of confusion. Good. And we're complete. So thank you so much to everyone for joining in and for being part so that we got exactly what we needed. Thank you. Great, so you finished. Wonderful, thank you so much, Greta. You're welcome, thank you. And uh, welcome to those that joined us. Um, so uh, I just wanted to uh, welcome David as well, who is new and we haven't uh, seen or heard from. If you if you want to unmute and say hello, um, please feel free to. Uh, uh, no obligation to, just uh, if you wanted to. And if you want to put your email in the chat to receive um, future emails about sacred segments, then please feel free to do that. As well, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to check in with Morag. Uh, how are you doing, Morag? You there, there. Oh, there we go. No, I'm too well, I'm uh, been really busy, which is um, good. Doing various things uh, with work, not healing work at the moment. That seems to be. A a big need, so yeah. Good. Life is good. It's just lots of exciting things unfolding, which I will share in future weeks. I'm just great. Um, I look forward to a future segment from you. We'll, I'll be in touch about that. 
Yeah, yeah, I've got a few ideas of things that I think would um, support the group. So. Excellent. Good to have you here with us. Um, thank but you. Had a lot of love tonight, that's all. Just been sitting here, sending everyone love. Lovely. Thank you. We need it. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bonnie, I'm going to ask you um, if you're happy to do your Healing Hub segment. Have you been working on a art piece as well? If you would unmute uh, so we can hear you. Okay. Have I been working on a what? And on an art piece while we've been talking as well. No, because I, I thought I was going after Anna, so I moved over to the kitchen. So okay. I've been in my, so I've been in my kitchen the whole time. So it no. It looks very scientific. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. All right. So um, I posted that um, I was going to do an herbal oil for dreams and uh, pain. And so I put the recipe online. And um, so we can change that recipe. And if you don't need that, then we can use the same oils to produce what you need and women and men if you want to make oils for your face follow the basic recipe okay and by the way vince i used to go to that church when it first opened in um pembroke pines and coral and um davy in the mid 1980s just to let you know okay yeah it was a long time ago all right so I want to start back first and let you know that yesterday I made this fabulous uh, drink with um, orange rinds and immunities uh, tea. And uh, it, as we finish this recipe, it's going to tell you to um, use a funnel and to um, a strainer. And so what I use is a coffee maker and I can't coffee, um, what you would call it, and a strainer like this and I put the coffee thing down in it. Okay, and then it does that. Okay, now the oils, as I've told you before, mine go for about a month to six weeks. You never, ever, ever want to boil your oil, okay? And I'm gonna start with a little pot like this, okay? And uh, I use a copper pot. My oil is never boiled and it's put on the burner for uh, on low for five to six weeks. Of course, when I go to the store, I sleep at night, I turn it off. But that article posted, excuse me, that you can put this into the sunshine and that works too. Well, I like that. But I also like the fact that I can put my oil on the stove for uh, on low, and it also permeates the house with a nice odor. So for most recipes call for grapeseed oil. And the reason they do is because grapeseed oil has no odor, okay? But you can use any kind of oil that you want, all right? This is up to you. I also, in this batch, am going to throw in some shortening that is uh, coconut oil, okay? So the difference that I will get are, um, okay, this is one that I've created that is with coconut oil. You can see that it's, um, you can't see through it. And I love this oil and I use it on my feet and I can also use it on my face. My other oils are, clear. And as you can see the bottom of these oils, you get the residue. And I like that. I like a little residue in my oils because those little residues I can use uh, on my face. Um, here are the normal jars, which are a lot larger. And I don't really care for these, but that's all the store had. So we go with what they have. Okay. So mugwort this this was actually my son's mugwort and i came home and found it in the drawer and i thought oh my god we're in texas and he is um he's smoking 
marijuana and it's really mugwort. Also, I'm gonna be using chamomile tea with anise, okay? I'm going to be using um, some frankincense oil, some hemp oil. I've got a better frankincense oil. I'm just not going to open it yet. And um, okay, so can you see? No, you cannot. Okay, on my pad. No, you can't see this, can you? I am going to actually roll these leaves, not that they break but that the pores open up so that when I'm applying them into the oil, they, they're able to saturate, okay? The, the tea bags, I've done the same, and I'm gonna cut the herbs out of the tea bag. And uh, let's say you wanna use something for your face instead of something for your feet, well, you're gonna look in your tea bag, if you don't have any fresh herbs, then you go look in your tea bags and see what do I have up there that I can use in these oils for me. Okay, so I'm doing this for my feet. And because I have um, neuritis in my feet, I'm going to put some pepper, I'm going to use chopped peppers. Okay, I'm also going to use some fresh ginger. I'm going to cut that up, chop it up. And I might put a little bit of tangerine um, peel in it. Okay, these are just the various different things that you can do to make these oils. Okay, now let me tell you that, and a lot of you women know, some of you men might know, that if you go to the store and you buy an oil like this, and I know because I've priced them, okay, some of these are $200, $300 worth of oil. And these oils are made from grapeseed oil, and they'll have another kind of a perfumey oil in it but they've used their own herbs to put into the oil and then they can sell them for these tremendous prices. Well, I don't do that because I don't want to take the liability of being sued. So I just usually hand out my oils and, you know, uh, that's what I've done. And I'm not really aggressive when it comes to sales and I wish I were, but I'm just not. Um, and uh, so that is basically, I'm going to put all this together next week. I will show you all of it cooking. And so that is the basis of it. If you have any questions, just let me know. Can you, can you speak us through the, um, the healing uh -oh, you're properties? Not through. Can you speak yeah. us through the, the properties of mugwort? What mugwort is used for, for healing? Okay, mugwort um, is really one of those herbs, and I wish Paul was here. Um, it is, it's uh, really, hey, Paul, okay, I'm talking about mugwort. Uh, you mentioned the other day that it's drinkable in tea. Um, I looked all over the place for something where you can, can, where you can ingest it. And I, I was told, do not take it but you can use it um, on your skin topically. On the other hand, I've heard Paul and other people tell me privately, yes, you can take it in a tea. And so I thought maybe um, it is, it, it's actually a witch's uh, herb and it's used to um, uh, in dreams, to create dreams, to, uh, help create uh bring out your creativity and um that is what i know and that's what i read about it and the, the only the only uh thing that i could find and i went through five books uh was this recipe and i loved it on making the dream oil so if paul wants to throw something in there that'd be great um I, maybe it might be um a country-based thing but over here you can you can make mugwort into a tea and it's great for pain relief the only drawback is is that sustained use will damage the liver but like paracetamol damages kidneys if you take too much of it um it's great for protection um in magic it's great for protection it's like you said it's great for lucid dreaming um it's often used for shamanic journeys or in what's known as a 
a flying ointment or oil. Um, mm -hmm. Anything, anything, oddly, anything with the warts on the end. There's an entire section of magic Mom to do with wart. 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 Yeah, I mean, wart. Yeah, wart. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. you've got mother wart, rag wart, you know, there, there's a whole yeah. family of them. Um, they're perennial mm -hmm. weeds. They grow everywhere. Um, I sell it. I sell chuckloads of it because people like to smoke it as an alternative for weed as well because it's a, a relaxant. Um, uh -huh. And it it's it's got mild, really mild psychotropic properties. So it's not going to give you a buzz like smoking cannabis, but it's for those people who want to like get away from smoking cannabis, it's it's great for that. Great for lucid Ooh. dreaming. Great for psychic opening up the psychic senses. Great for protection. Um, and also it's dedicated to several underworld goddesses as well. So people like the Morrigan, Hecate, Demeter, when she's for the six months of the year that she's with Hades. Uh, we have one minute left on this segment. Yeah, I think that's about okay. it. That's what I can think of right now, I'm afraid. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate no you. Worries. Well, okay, so next week you're going to show us a further development in that oil. Is that right? Is that what you said? I'm going to show you the oil in the pot, and uh, that will just be brief. I'll just show you how I have it on the stove and um, how I'm preparing it. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, so from what I had a look at Mugwort, and I'd never heard of this apart from in Harry Potter. <laughs> um, it's been around for a long time. It sounds, it sounds very sort of like magical and witchy, right? Um, it Mugwort. is. There it is. Yep. Yes. There's all yes. kinds of healing properties which you, which you can look into online. I just had a look, um, particularly circulation and pain and uh, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, with, um, with that... Uh, with time for that segment over. Thank you so much, Bonnie, uh, for introducing us to Funny. those healing properties of mugwort. Okay, so in closing this session, I would like to uh, ask you all for a power word to help us to step into the energy that we speak in closing this this segment so um let's just take a deep breath and on the out breath just allow your breathing to become a little bit deeper than usual and just as as we enter into that space of of clarity and calmness um just ask yourself, what energy would you like to step into? I'll, I'll go first and then we'll go around the group. Um, I have two words and mine are peace and power. I'm going to ask Paul what your power word is. Pollination. Wow. So like literally like spreading your seed around the around the globe. Absolutely. It's a good so job you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you'd have children in every port. Okay. Um thank you, Paul. Uh Anna. Well, I'm just about to leave my second Saturn return. Woohoo! coming out of that and my word is abundance and inspiration oh, thank you so on the speaking of that word let's all just take a deep breath every time somebody says their word <laughs> thank you anna uh bonnie your power word to do Wow. To do as in as in a to do list. To do as if you speak it, do it, you know? Wow, love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, deep breath. Carl. Vision. Love that. Yeah, let's let's breathe in on that one. Thank
Thank you, Carl. DJ. Uh, I also have two words. Um, it's confidence and faith. Right. Wow. Let's breathe in on confidence and faith. Just connecting with those word vibrations. Thank you, DJ. Syra, your power word. Whoops, I just cut myself off. Um, uh, vitality. Oh, that's a very dynamic one. Let's breathe in on vitality. Awesome. Thank you, Syra. And Morag, your power word. Two, courage and trust. What was your first one? Courage. Courage and trust. Thank you. Okay, let's breathe in on that. Makes me think of the lion from the from the Wizard of Oz. Courage. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Come to say. I love cats. Great to see you all, everyone, and. Um, I look forward to maybe seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you all for your time and energy and your words and uh, have a beautiful evening and see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.